Hello, uh, Discord patrons, Spark citizens. This is Grant checking in, and I wanted to follow through on one of my promises, and that is to show you transparently what our crypto portfolio is at. A lot of you are asking, you know, what's the real makeup? Where's your money sit? And we're going to talk in more detail, probably in another video, of where my crypto money is and why I owe one of you have requested a tutorial on how to like purchase NFTs and going and what's going on with that. Uh, so I'll have another tutorial for that. But this is just for Patreon users and supporters of the Discord and whatnot on um, what our current uh, crypto portfolio is. And I'll try to update this time to time. Um, you know, sometimes uh, we can buy and sell so often that it throws off our dollar cost averages, which I'm a big fan of dollar cost averaging. I just think it's smarter. Um, but the goal obviously is to grow. And we'll also be covering another video like what we're doing with crypto lending. But for today's video, I just literally wanted to show you the actual current breakdown, our current numbers, um, because a lot of you were asking. So I just wanted to get it all in one uh, location. So I'm going to share my screen in just a hot second and just get right at that. And then I wanted to kind of give a, a little bit of an explanation of why my holdings are what they currently are to give you a little bit of ration, and a little bit of intelligence that hopefully makes you, uh, again, a little bit of money and, and where we're moving our money from. And eventually, uh, again, in an entirely separate video, I'm going to actually show you my, our Roth IRAs and how that compares to our crypto investments and how money's flowing from the former to the latter, because we're going to be doing that more and more. So let's just show this to you very quickly. Uh, let's see what my screen does here. Um, so I'm going to have this, this pie chart breakdown where we're actually going to show you what's what. You could probably see some numbers going on there. And then I'm actually going to break down the actual, actual numbers for you at this moment. I'll also give you an idea. And I, I'm, I'm going to dial this in because it's been a little while since I've calculated my actual dollar cost average across the board. Um, on some, my dollar cost average is a little high, so I'm really waiting for things to pull back. On other things, uh, I know that my dollar cost average is so low that I kind of have just stopped tracking. That's bad, bad shame on me. Um, but let's jump, let's jump right in and share with you kind of what we're looking at. So first off, starting from the top here, um, we've got Bitcoin. So I try to also match up the colors a little bit. So we've got Bitcoin at 3.311, you know, one of my favorite bands, 3.11%. Um, Ethereum, 19.68%. And that has been historically higher, uh, but it's given away, as you can see right here, to Cardano. Cardano is 48.53%. Tezos, and I'll explain why I'm holding these real quick. Tezos is at 7.2% of our holdings. XRP Ripple is 3.1%. I've been a big fan of Ripple, and I still am to this day. And if I can get a hold of Ripple when it dips over at KuCoin, you can't get it at Coinbase, but at KuCoin, I'm going to actually look for entry points. And we'll talk about that as a watch list, because as the SEC eases up on Ripple, it's, they've been tying them up for a while, close to over a year now. But I believe that they're going to go gangbusters for the fintech or the DeFi services. But Cardano could also pass them up in different ways. I'm holding a little bit of Algorand, but in all honesty, I'm looking for an exit from Algorand myself. I am holding Chainlink, and I want to grow my holdings in Chainlink. I'm holding USDT, and I, I separated that. My USDT is 1.4%. Now, I've got 8% of my crypto holdings, and this is going to go up with USDT, which is Tethercoin or USD Tethercoin, um, for crypto lending. And I'm geeked out. I'm going to do an entire separate video on crypto lending because I'm really geeked out about it. And I'm even looking at uh, crypto lending on margin. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. KuCoin I'm holding because I'm experimenting. This is an experiment right now on their own staking rewards, which I've consistently gotten a little bit of staking at 3.3%. I don't know if I'll hold it. And USDC, I'm looking for a right exit, but USDC is basically a, uh, is a stable coin. It's USDC stable coin on the Ethereum network. But my my amount, this is like a hundred bucks. Let's see. Yeah, it's like a hundred dollars. It's not a lot. So I keep trying to transfer it into one of these other holdings I want, but it's an Ethereum-based coin. So the gas fees, the transaction fees, known as gas fees, for this hundred dollars are are higher than the hundred dollars itself, which is an absolute frustration, which is evidence why we're getting into this. So let's look at this real quick. Bitcoin, 
My first purchase at Bitcoin is when it was at $800. Um, that's high compared to a lot of the braggarts out there, but I, I'm obviously bragging about that now. Um, and I'm only holding a total of $238.77. I bought more on this last dip when it was down around 40000 or under 40000 It rallied back up to forty, and I just took my profits and I transferred it into Cardano and Ethereum. I am holding Ethereum. I'm holding $1,500 in Ethereum in several places. I'll break down why they're in these other places some other day. But right now, it makes up 19% of my portfolio and $1,500. Now listen, Ethereum to me is the behemoth. It's got a big war chest. They're developing it a lot, but there's some real negatives. And you can see what I believe. I believe Cardano stands a chance right now to knock Ethereum down as it starts to gain steam. There's several major reasons for this, but I will only talk about Ethereum in contrast to why I love Cardano right now. So I've been geeked out about Cardano for several reasons. I've got $3,700 in Cardano in several locations. I'm staking Cardano and the Dedulous Wallet. We'll talk about some of that. I'm basically earning about 8 or 10% a year on that Cardano in the Dedulous Wallet. I got to look at how that's performing today. Every seven days I put in, every seven days it compounds daily and then it pays out. And then if I think about it, I get back and re restart the staking. Um... But I'm buying Cardano every time there's a pullback. I think there's a pullback right now, and I think we're due for a buy alert that I'm going to buy more. If this approach is closer to the $2 mark, I'm going to buy more. I like Cardano for a lot of reasons. Number one, how their team actually vets and decides on um, different coding protocols is rigid. They go through a PhD peer review process, which is a phenomenally thorough process. It's slower, and it histor historically has been... Uh, lagging behind Ethereum. But here's the thing. This is where we're going to contrast. Cardano has one major thing going for it, um, and that's liquidity. Cardano can do a million transactions a second or more, which is really high. Ethereum only can do about 1,400 transactions a second. Super slow. Another comparison on why I absolutely love Cardano and the underlying technology is it's proof of stake, not proof of work. So if you ever hear of mining... Crypto miners, I believe, are going to go away entirely. There's not even going to be a market for crypto mining. Um, that's proof of work. Is your computer just spinning, producing these blocks that get unlocked? That concept was really cutting edge just a few years ago. But what we found is proof of stake is a lot less power hungry. Right now, Bitcoin and Ethereum contr uh, uh, contribute to more power consumption. They consume more power than many small countries. It's huge. It's bad for the environment. Cardano's proof of stake. So you don't have to run a bunch of computer processing power to get it. So uh, so it's, it's efficient, it's faster, there's more liquidity. And we know that when a currency, any currency, has a high amount of liquidity, it can move quickly and get exchanged quickly, nearly instantaneously, we know that it has more viability because it can be adopted more quickly by a user base. Ethereum has a very slow adoption. You can do a transaction and it can take forever. Now, why am I still holding so much Ethereum if I really believe that? Well, Ethereum is proposing that by December, it will move from proof of stake to proof of work. If that transition goes smoothly in December, suddenly Ethereum is a real contender. Because the, right now, I could do a transaction. This is the third major thing of why I like Cardano more than Ethereum. You can do a transaction. Like I can mint or create an NFT right now. And I have a whole collection of NFTs that I'm creating. A, for Spark Citizens, and B, for some super low-key secret projects I'm working on, even under another avatar entirely. And I'm looking at doing those either on Tezos or on Cardano, most likely Cardano. And the, and the real reason is I can create an NFT for less than a dollar in network fees, transaction fees, basically. Like you go to an ATM, there's transaction fees. There's similar fees like that in these networks. But when you've got this proof of work and it can take all this time, these gas fees with Ethereum can be in the hundreds of dollars. I could create an Ethereum-based NFT on the OpenSea NFT network. And it literally cost me hundreds of dollars to get this posted. This has also artificially inflated the art market over at OpenSea. But in the Cardano market, which just had some wonkiness too, it's not as established, but you can create this transaction for less than a dollar of Cardano. That's huge. And, and 
I know that doesn't sound like much, but the public, the adopting public who wants to get involved and feels like it's missing out, it will go to more affordable markets. It's just the way economics works. So I believe from an economic standpoint, Cardano is there. From an economic standpoint, from a liquidity standpoint, from a power consumption standpoint, it's there. Now, let's talk about the community. The community of Ethereum is having a lot of fun and making a lot of money. But the Ethereum community, I wouldn't say, are diehards. The Cardano community are diehards. They're all about this. They meet in private groups. And, and though there are a lot of developers for Ethereum who are diehard, the public isn't diehard for Ethereum. But there's a, a, a large layperson or public um, uh, adoption of just the Cardano community. The best example is I just attended the Cardano Summit last weekend. It was completely virtual. It was in the metaverse, which I totally believe is the future of the metaverse. Um, and we were all given avatars and it had little expos that you could transport to. And the video streaming was perfectly done. It was very seamless. It was smooth. And it had a lot of interactive functions where you're interacting with the lay people who are trying to adopt Cardano. Similarly, Cardano has very publicly supported the Veritree chain, which is a... Um, a blockchain, if you will, that every time you donate a, a Cardano, you get a Verichain token in return, and they also plant a tree. And you can actually see where these trees are being planted. It's a pretty cool little blockchain project. I don't know if you really need blockchain or tokens to go with it to feel good about it, but our, already Cardano is the safer, greener option. But they also have a very strong community that's big on giving back. And their mission is, I believe, really touches me. Their mission is to give identity to the unbanked. And that's a killer thought because there's so many people that we worked with in Haiti and the Dominican Republic that can't get access to finance and can't get access to leverage. And lo and behold, they can suddenly get Cardano and do crypto lending. They don't need a secured loan. They don't need credit. They can just go do that. Now, let's back up. There's a few big announcements that have been hitting Cardano, and Ethereum has not really announced any serious partnerships of late. They have some serious partnerships, but mostly it's investing institutional investing partnerships, and we can break that down in more detail. However, Cardano just announced a huge industry-shaking partnership with Boost Mobile. Every Boost Mobile uh, user will ultimately have their data and credits stored on Cardano. Dish will have a similar function and Dish and Boost are partnering with Amazon. This is one foot closer to being adopted by Amazon. This is a huge partnership. So the coin itself has a strong future, but I'm also investing because I might be launching my NFT projects, wink, 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 on the Cardano network as that gets uh, as that gets stabilized. And then there's two other major things going on. One is Cody coin. Well, three, one is Cody coin. The third is chain link, which is why I'm holding chain link. And, uh, the third item, Cody coin chain link. Oh, and ergo or ERG, the erg market is a marketplace coming up. That is going to be absolutely phenomenal. They're about to launch. The founders of that have been founders of Cardano, founders of Ethereum. It's a very reputable, reputable crew, as is the Cardano crew. Cody Coin is taking off because Cody is actually going to be supporting, so as is Chainlink, some on-chain finance stable coins, which basically anytime that you have it, like it's like the gold standard. Anytime you have a gold standard in a finance ec uh, economic system, you can trust that it's not going to be such a wild market. Similarly, Cardano was about to use Chainlink partnered with Cody Coin, C-O-T-I, which is why I'm watching. It's a Cody Coin's on our watch list to pull back because they're going to be direct on-chain data information. Think of having a uh, CNN data stream or MSNBC data stream of like the ticker symbol, but built baked right into the blockchain. So you could fire up another coin, you could fire up a smart contract and you could say, pull data from Chainlink and it'll pull the latest interest rate. Super intelligent use of this stuff. And so I just see a lot of innovation. I think that in this case, Cardano was the tortoise as opposed to Ethereum being the hare. But because of that, it's paying off for Cardano because they have a very stable network, a very strong community, and a lot of really cool partnerships and development going on right now that you can't shake a stick at. And there's a lot of other side stuff. So I am going heavy, hot and heavy into Cardano. It's more in line with the Spark mission of reaching more people. It's more in line of the Spark mission of being more affordable. It doesn't have to be so elite, including the NFTs and how the NFT marketplace is going. So that's why I'm holding this. But there's also a possibility, like I said, that in December, Ethereum solves 
it's proof of work versus proof of stake. And that could also help it solve the transactions. If you can get the transactions from 1,400 closer to a million, it's now a strong competitor. So you're going to see me hold a big chunk of Ethereum for a while in tandem with my Cardano. Now, I've been holding Tezos for a while for several reasons. Number one, just in Coinbase alone, it earns 4% a year. So I don't treat this as a stable coin. This coin whipsaws. It's been $3 just a month ago, and now it's up to 7 and 8 I'll buy and sell. I can buy and sell and move in and out of Tezos very quickly and easily if I just want to earn 10 20 30%. I can watch that thing, ride it up 10 or 20%, pull off my profits, watch it tank below my dollar cost average, buy more, and just churn. So this little guy is really fun just to do right from Coinbase. You can see over here, I've got about $500 in Tezos right now in Coinbase. It's not only earning me 4%, but it's an easy churn because it's a volatile coin and I'm very used to it. Don't just dump a ton of money. If And I'm don't saying this is trading advice. Don't just buy these because I'm using them. I always recommend if I had if I have $1,000 and I know I want to move into something like Tezos or Cardano or Ethereum, I won't stick the thousand dollars. I'll stick two hundred and fifty or five hundred, and I'll wait for the thing to move, and then I'll move another hundred in, and then another hundred in until my dollar cost average evens out, and I understand how that thing moves. That's what I've got with Tezos. I'm still holding XRP. I'm holding Ripple. I'm only holding two hundred and thirty-six uh, Ripple right now. I used to have thousands of Ripple, but the SEC locked them up into a, a lawsuit and they, they've they had a lot of their funds frozen during the duration of the lawsuit. Now, it looks like they're going to win or settle the lawsuit. As soon as they settle, XRP is a financial coin that has contracts with Santander and American Express. They've got a strong future helping large financial institutions move large chunks of money for a fraction of the cost across international lines without having extraordinary expense. This is a huge contract and I think they have a strong future. But right now, it's all tied up in the SEC and as soon as it settles, I'm going to love uh, XRP or Ripple. Again, I am going to love it. So I am watching for it to pull back and I'll be buying more. Algorand. Someone pointed me in that direction. I looked up. I was interested in the project. It does look interesting, but not interesting enough for me to keep my money in. I've got a decent dollar cost average right now. As soon as I'm up... Um, over 10 or 15%, I'm going to sell out of Algorand entirely. I, I don't want to be spread so thin. I want to focus money in other places. Chainlink. As soon as Chainlink, Chainlink's use case was proven to me because of its relationship to Cardano. Chainlink is a cross-chain blockchain. Basically, it's going to help chains like Ethereum, which doesn't talk to Cardano. Chainlink is a blockchain that actually helps them all talk. That's its mission. But it's going to be doing things like I mentioned before, and that's piping in financial data native on chain so that no matter if you're buying a house and you're like, hey, what's the standard interest rates right now? You can just pull that, hook that in as a non-developer. You can just hook that into a smart contract and eventually not even need a title company or an insurance company because Chainlink will be pulling in this data automatically across chains. It has an extraordinary use case for nearly every blockchain and our big philosophy of time freedom is if you're building a business or an idea and you think, hey, this is the coolest idea ever, well, don't just get involved in the thing. Sell picks and axes because everyone's going to be flowing to that thing. And this was the metaphor of the people that made the most amount of millions during the 49er gold rush of the 1849s were the people that sold picks and axes to the gold diggers. Very few gold diggers made money, but a lot of the picks and axe sellers made a ton of money. Chain link to me is a pick and ax to what's going on across all blockchains. So I'll be watching for, for opportunities to buy more of that. So if I had a chance to get rid of my Algorand and then buy more Chainlink, you know I would do that. I'm going to be watching for that exchange. And I'll break down, where's my Chainlink? My Chainlink right now is on Coinbase. Coinbase is a little expensive. I might move it to KuCoin later. We'll talk about that. I am holding Tether. Why am I holding USDT Tether? There's a lot of drama around it, which we could profile another day. But USDT is a stable coin. It's pegged to the US dollar. So whatever value the US dollar is, the USDT Tether coin is pegged to it. Fun fact, if you ever see, hey, what's the price of Bitcoin in US dollars? Very rarely is it actually being quoted in US dollars. More often than not, it's actually pulling information from US Tether, and it's often doing that through a chain link. 
So we got to actually know, and it's important to know because at any, and there is some risk in that, but the USDT coin is made to tie into other coins so that they know what they're worth relative to the US dollar. So I'm holding USDT, but the only reason I'm holding any USDT is I am stair-stepping that in and out of USDT lending. So you can actually stand to make a ton of return, anywhere from 6 to 30% annual return broken down over a day rate by doing uh, crypto lending. And I'm going to do an entire other video on crypto lending because there's some real opportunities right now going on. I'm doing USDT, but I'm actually looking at shifting a lot of this to Hydra. We'll talk about that later. But these are all experiments. So right now, I actually have USDT makes up 1.4%. Uh, or $103, but I've got this other one called USDT Lending. These are actively being lent out right now. On the 29th, that's tomorrow. No, that's Wednesday. My next round of lending is going to open up. I'm going to get my seven-day uh, annualized or my seven-day return, and then I'm just going to stick it all back into another lending, and I'm just churning this as a conservative investment, and I want to grow my lending investments. So I do seven-day lendings. They have an annual APY rate of anywhere between 6 and 30%, depending on the coin. And I, I liquidate every seven days to lower my risk. So in total, I've got about $757 uh, right now cycling in and out of crypto lending. And then what I'll do is I'll probably treat it like a CD ladder where every seven days... I'll, uh, I'll actually go to 14 days to increase my rate just a little bit, but I'll stagger them seven days. So I'll start one for seven days and then the next and kind of create a crypto lending ladder. So that's happening. Then I've got KuCoin, which makes up 3.3% right now. And that's an experiment I'm doing because staking on KuCoin, I've got, uh, I'm having more and more of my holdings over at KuCoin because it's more affordable than Coinbase. Let's see, I've got $1,200 of my $7,000 in crypto right now. $1,200 of it is at KuCoin. And I'm going to be doing that more and more uh, because they just have, hey, just hold KuCoin because they're doing a huge margin calls. They're doing their own lending. And if you can hold KuCoin, they can do their accounting so that it balances out. So that you holding KuCoin, you own it, but you're basically lending it to KuCoin so that they can lend it out. Guess what? That's what your bank does anyway. They get arbitrage on the spread and they're paying you a healthy rate. And that's just because crypto lending is technically unsecured lending, which means that they can charge more for those borrowing from them than the average bank and then return it to you through a ton of crypto and decentralized finance uh, uh, tools. So right now I've got, again, $251, not a lot. I'm just holding it, but over the last two seven-day period cycles, I pulled, I think it was 4% in two separate uh, cycles where it's just staking at, if, if I annualized it, I think I wouldn't even believe it myself. But the last two cycles have been about 4%, which has been huge. And then, like I said, I'm only holding USDC only at $100 because I cannot move it because of those Ethereum fees. When it costs $200 of Ethereum, to transfer $100, you're just going to leave it sit. So it's kind of stuck, which is why I've got so much more Cardano than Ethereum, unless Ethereum changes its tune come December. So that's my portfolio. Um, I've got the subtotals here. I'll take a screenshot of this and post it in the Patreon post. And then I'll actually create another sheet like this for you so that you can start uh, tracking. It's a simple spreadsheet. You could make your own, but I'll download a version of this uh, so you can upload it to your own Google Sheets or I'll link to this so that you could make a copy and enter your own and kind of keep track of what your own portfolio is. I'll try to update this semi-regularly so you can kind of see how my portfolio is evolving. And then we'll, in other videos, we're going to extrapolate what portion of our entire empire does crypto make? What portion of our time are we giving crypto versus real estate versus our businesses? And why are we structuring things this way? So we'll talk more about that. Listen, Tell your friends, we've just got a few spots open right now in the Patreon. These are our initial 10 spots. Check it out. Let us know if you want to be involved or if you want to learn more about stuff like this and tell me what you'd like us to do research on. And I'm going to be posting actually in the Discord, really get involved in the Discord. We're going to have a lot of good conversation there. Post in the Discord if you want me to profile any specific aspect of the empire. 
and we'll share transparently with you. So thanks so much. Looking forward to talking to you again soon.